Well, hello guys, it is that time once again for another edition of Odds and Ends, where I read you some really brand new stories from all over the world, and, well, what can I say, they don't call it Odds and Ends for a reason, you know? Now, I know I'm extremely late with this, though, but, um, some stuff has come up, and, um, at the moment I'm a little sick, I have a stuffy nose, and my tonsil is swollen, so my throat, so my voice is going to be two notches deeper, which is bizarre, but, anyways, aside from that, um, I'm going to be doing two odds and ends, not at the same time, I'm going to be doing them in two separate videos because the time it takes for me to do one and then do another, it's going to be extremely long and I doubt anybody wants to be watching it for that long though, but, so anyways, uh, this is from uh, last week, so this is the oldest one and then the next one I'm going to be reading is the most current one before the next issue comes out, so um, without further ado, let's get to these stories. Now our first one comes out of Germany where a gang of thieves in central Germany landed a sweet score earlier this month, making off with five metric tons of Nutella. The treasure trove of chocolate hazelnut spread was inside a parked trailer at the spa ta resort town of Bad Harris Harrisfeld. Source sources estimate upwards of 13,750 jars of Nutella worth more than $20,000 went missing in the vehicular bur in the vehicular ve vehicular burglary police say several food based heists have occurred in the area in recent months the nutella bandits are suspected of participating in a major energy drink theft several weeks ago really you hijacked 13,750 jars worth of nutella that's worth more than $20,000 what for? So you can just eat it? I mean, don't get me wrong, that stuff is pretty good, but there is going to be a time when you're when there's going to be too much and uh, you're going to be like, okay, well, we had at least, what, three jars? Now we have 17,400 and uh, 747 jars left. So what are we going to do with the rest of it? Or you guys could probably sell it for maybe a fraction of the price or whatever the price it is there in Germany, though. But who knows? But... Anyways, and we are moving on to our next story, which comes out of the United Arab Emirates, which I've never even heard of, but apparently it's, um, it's part of the world. So, how rich is the UAE? Police in Dubai announced their, on their tw Twitter feed that they have added a $400,000 Lamborghini Avian Event door to their fleet. The vehicle is reportedly capable of speeds of up to 349 kilometers an hour or 316 miles per hour. For those of you who don't know how to convert, but uh, despite the increasing number of police chases involving luxury sports cars on the streets of Dubai, Deputy Police Director General Kamis Matter um, Mazina told Al Jazeera and the green and white Lamborghini told the green and white Lamborghini would most likely be dispatched to tourist areas to show, quote, how classy Dubai is. So you think buying a $400,000 Lamborghini is just going to show how freaking nice Dubai is? I think it's going to take more than that. And I think it was a stupid move because how many people are going to try to steal a $400,000 car? A lot. Especially in that area. I'm just saying. And we're moving on to our next story, which comes out of Mississippi, where drive-by shootings aren't uncommon in today's urban environment. But Tulepo, Mississippi, now has the distinction of hosting what could be the world's first drive-by elephant shooting. Police say an, un an unidentified person or persons drove past the Bancorp South Arena parking lot and fired a gun into the area where animals were being kept for, the up for an upcoming circus performance. The incident took place at around 2 a.m. on the morning of April 9th. A 39-year-old Asian elephant named Carol, traveling with the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus, was struck by a single bullet. Todd Hunt, executive director of the arena where the circus was scheduled to perform April 11th through the 14th, talked to the Northeast Mississippi Daily Journal and told circus personnel that the city is not typically dangerous for circus elephants. 
quote, we want to assure them that Tulepo is safe and that this isn't normal or tolerated. A Ringling spokesperson said that the elephant is under veterinary, veterinary care and is expected to make a full recovery. No other animals were injured in the incident. To the people who shot the elephant, my question to you is, why? What did the elephant ever do to you? Do you not like the circus? That doesn't mean you have to go around and shooting a freaking elephant for Christ's sakes. And this elephant is 39 years old. I don't know how to convert that between, uh, uh, what's it, human years and elephant years, but... I mean, for Christ's sakes, man, an elephant, it's just an innocent animal. Well, unless you threaten it, then it'll trample you, though, but still. It doesn't give you the right to freaking shoot the damn thing. Golly. I hope they get caught, and I'm mostly sure that they will. Moving on to our next story, which comes out of Washington, where the only thing a couple in East Wentachi lost during a home break-in break -in, was the world's worst watchdog. According to a police department spokesperson, 38-year-old Jason L. McDaniel is suspected of breaking into the couple's home through a basement window on the night of Saturday, April 6th. The suspect was still there when the couple got home. Quote, he was standing there with the refrigerator door open and feeding their dog some pudding. Assistant P Police Chief Dan Riz Rearson told the Wentachi World. McDaniel is alleg McDaniel allegedly told the homeowners he was looking for a person he wanted to kill, but was informed that his victim, that his intended victim, lived someplace else. After spending some time sitting in the cup couple's rocking chair, the man decided to take his exit. Before heading out the door, however, he called for the dog, who promptly ditched his owners and left with the burglar. McDaniel was later arrested, and the poorly named dog, quote, Buddy was now found at McDaniel's home. Police are asking the public's help in locating the missing black lab slash pitbull mix. Really, dude? Out of all the freaking things you take, you take an owner's dog? Wow, way to go. But, I mean, you fed him pudding and you said, you know, come here, boy, you know, and he came, which was uh, kind of not unusual because, I mean, when dogs get to know people and you call them by their names they usually you know come to the person whoever is talking to them though but um i sure hope they find this dog seriously because i want to know what's going to that dog's mind and hopefully the owners don't do anything bad to it and say oh you betrayed us and this, that and the other which would be really stupid but moving on to our final story which also comes out of washington where a Japanese fish trapped by the 2011 tsunami survived a two-year, 5,000-mile journey to the Washington coast. Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife officials spotted the striped beak fish in the water-filled bait box of an 18-inch foot skiff that had washed up near Long Beach, Washington. The officials were collecting samples of marine organisms from the beach vessel but did not expect to find a full-sized tropical fish living inside. Quote, people are pretty fascinated about seeing this fish and the fact that it, had, it came all the way over from Japan in the debris, so it can't, so it has been a pretty cool event. Uh, Keith Chandler of the Seaside Aquarium in Oregon told Britain's ITN News. The four-inch, quote, tsunami fish, which is now housed in, at the Seaside Aquarium, is believed to have survived by feeding on other organisms in the boat. Four other striped beak fish were found inside the beach skiff, but were, quote, euthanized for study. So, that is pretty amazing. I'm not going to lie, because, I mean, it's like, how often do you see a fish that came 5,000 miles and survived and came all the way from one ocean to the other? And I'm probably sure I got that wrong because my history and my knowledge of the world is obviously crap because it's obviously in here and now it's gone. But aside from that, but I mean, it's really interesting to see some stuff like this. I mean, it's not often you see like a beached whale or a beach seal or a beach penguin or, you know, stuff like that. But this fish that came from Japan, that's kind of a weird find though. But 
They found four more and they say, quote, euthanized for study. Obviously, the way that sounds, it doesn't sound very, very well. Because when they say euthanized for study, it could mean a lot of different things. But. So, yeah, anyways, guys, that is it for this edition of Odds and Ends. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this until so as much as I like reading them to you. And um, I know I can tell already just by the end of this, it's totally whack. But you know what? I don't care. As long as I got Odds and Ends, and as long as you guys are here, and as long as I'm letting you know that I have not quit, and I'm still going to be doing Odds and Ends no matter what. You know, that's pretty much the whole point of this, though. But, um... Just bad timing. That's all it is, though. But anyways, guys, that is it for this edition. And uh, until next time, we will see you guys later. And take it easy.